Welcome to the Legacy Education ICD-10 CM Guideline Review Series. I am Tiffany Roach, the Coding Coach, and I will be walking through the ICD-10 CM Guidelines with you. This video will cover the chapter-specific guidelines for Chapter 10, Diseases of the Respiratory System, which is represented by codes J00 through J99 and U07.0. This presentation is designed to review the ICD-10 CM guidelines that are effective for both fiscal year 2024 and 2025. There were no changes to the guidelines from fiscal year 2024 to 2025. Let's first cover the guidelines for COPD and asthma. Codes in J44 and J45 will distinguish between uncomplicated cases and cases that have acute exacerbation. When you see the term acute exacerbation, it just means that there is a worsening or decompensation of a chronic condition. So in this case, your asthma or your COPD. Next, we have acute respiratory failure. Acute respiratory failure or subcategory J96.0 or J96.2 can be assigned as a principal diagnosis when it is established to be chiefly responsible for the admission to the hospital or for the encounter. However, remember that if there are chapter-specific guidelines that provide sequencing instructions, such as for obstetrics, HIV, or poisoning, those will take precedence and should be followed. When respiratory failure occurs after admission or is present on admission, but it is not the chief recent reason for your admission, then it can be listed as a secondary diagnosis. As with all other conditions, the principal diagnosis will not be the same in every situation. If a patient is admitted with respiratory failure and another acute condition, such as an MI, CVA, or aspiration pneumonia, then the selection of the principal diagnosis will be dependent on the circumstances of the encounter. If both the respiratory failure and the other acute condition are equally responsible for the admission, and there are no other chapter-specific guidelines that clarify sequencing, the guideline for two or more diagnoses for principal diagnosis in Section 2 should be applied. If the documentation is not clear as to whether the condition is responsible for the admission, then you should query the provider. When coding for influenza, confirmation does not require documentation of a positive lab test, and it can be coded based on the provider's diagnostic statement that the patient has the specific type of influenza. If the provider documents suspected, possible, or probable specified influenza, then the appropriate code from category J11 for influenza due to unidentified influenza virus should be assigned. It is important to note that a code from J09 and J10 should not be assigned together under any circumstances. Next up is ventilator-assisted pneumonia. Code assignment for the ventilator-assisted pneumonia should be based on the provider's documentation of the relationship between the two. The provider must state that the pneumonia is associated with the ventilator. If they do not state that it is associated and it is unclear as to whether it is associated, you should query the provider. <clears throat> when it is documented, code J95.851 should be assigned as well as a code to identify the organism. The additional code should not be a code from categories J12 through J18. If a patient is admitted with one type of pneumonia and subsequently develops ven ventilatory associated pneumonia, the principal diagnosis would represent the type of pneumonia that is diagnosed at the time of the admission and then followed by code J95.851 for your ventilator assisted pneumonia as an additional diagnosis. When a patient has a vaping-related disorder, code U07.1 should be assigned as the principal or first listed diagnosis. When a lung injury due to vaping is present, only assign U07.0. Additional codes may be needed to identify manifestations such as your acute respiratory failure or pneumonia. 
Associated respiratory signs and symptoms, such as cough, shortness of breath, and wheezing, should not be coded separately. However, it would be appropriate to code separately any signs and symptoms that are not related to the respiratory system, such as diarrhea and abdominal pain. As always, thank you for supporting us and stay tuned for new videos in our ICD-10 CM guideline review. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be in the know of our newest videos as they are released.